So today I'm showing you how to change your gauge cluster bulbs, whether you're going from bulb to LED or shitty LED to high quality LED like I am. So first thing we gotta do is move this tray, put it somewhere safe, it's got change in it. You don't want it spilling everywhere. Next thing you wanna do is this lower console here. You gotta take out, there's a clip over there and a clip right there. I already took mine out. The next thing, you just go ahead and grab this. Just pull it out a little ways. See those two clips right there? You gotta remove both of those. Take these knobs off. Put these in the same place so you don't step on them and break them. This is the part I struggle with. This bezel right here is super flimsy. You gotta be really careful when you remove it. I usually pry up in a couple spots and get it loose and then just one, two, three, yank it. So I got this side loose. Now it's just a tight, just about jimmy in it. There's that out. I usually put it up here so it doesn't get stepped on. If you have an aftermarket deck, I'd recommend taking the faceplate off. So now this is when you get your screwdriver out. We need to remove this screw. There's a screw up inside of here. Actually, look at I'm missing mine. And then this screw here. So now you should be able to just grab under here, pop her loose. You gotta pull it out just a hair. There's some clips. You can see right there this yellow clip and this white clip here. You can undo all those clips down there, but what I do is I usually just roll this to the side like that. So now we're done with that side. We're going to move over to this side. The first step over here is removing that Phillips head, that 10 millimeter, that 10 millimeter, that 10 millimeter, and that 10 millimeter. Those two are right by the handbrake. That one's down low by the fuse cover, and this one's by the diff lock switch. Now, just pull that down. Okay, so this is the engine pop cable. I just leave that attached. Just leave it hanging down like that. In order to get this bezel out, we have to take the steering column covers off. In order to do that, we need to remove this single screw on the bottom side of the covers. Next step, you gotta put your key in the ignition. Turn the wheel until you can access this screw. There's a screw on the other side. You have to turn the wheel the other direction to get to that one as well. So now that I got both these screws removed, you just split this apart. goes the bottom and you just pull this one out the top. Then the next step is to remove this screw, <laughs> this screw, Jesus. Yeah, that scared the crap out of me. Okay, there's an event. There's an event. There's a vent right here. You have to pull a part up in here. It's kind of hard to explain. You'll have to kind of Look under there and see what I'm talking about. There was a screw I missed. This one right there. It's right down and to the right of the diff lock button. So there's three clips. One's for the clutch start cancel. The next one's the instrument cluster dimmer, that white one. And there's one a little farther down that is the diff lock 
for models that have the differential lock as well as the hazards so you got to get behind there and unclip that that clip down there focus you frick so i got those unclipped just gently pull it out something's not all right let's throw that in the back seat all right now we're almost to the meat and potatoes there's a screw there there's a screw there. There's a screw on top on the right side and one on the bottom on the right side. So basically, you've got four screws, two on that side, two on that side. Okay, now I got the screws out. You can pull it out pretty easily. So I usually just pull it out of the socket, turn it upright like that, and then you can get to those three clips. There's a white one on the top right side, a blue one in the middle, and a brown one on the very left side. Be careful with these clips because you can break them pretty easily. This is the back side of the gauge cluster. These, these four green clips hold the back lights. The rest of these are warning lights, battery charge light, check engine light, blinkers, whatever. I'm not replacing those because I'm not concerned with the color that they are. How you get these clips out is you just grab on them with your fingers, turn them left. It's about a quarter turn. Quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn. Now you can see these are the LEDs that I was bitching about. The cheap Chinese. They have a side fire and a front fire. So here's an up close of the ones that were in there. You can see some of the solders are kind of crappy. But I can't see any broken solders. I think it's the LED themselves. But I don't really care because I'm going to replace them anyway. These are the... These are the ones I'm replacing with. I got these off Amazon. They're Phillips. I was gonna go with the Sylvania, but I don't know why these had better reviews, so I'm gonna give them a shot. I wanted to show you a side-by-side -side of these compared to each other. You can tell the plastic on the, the Chinese LED is quite a bit cheaper than the plastic on the Phillips one. The Phillips also has printing on it, which is a whole nother step in the manufacturing process. So it goes to show that they actually care about their product. Another thing that I notice is if you look at the, the leads, the ones on the Chinese LED are so thin compared to the ones on the Philips. See, they're quite a bit thicker. It's almost like double the thickness. Another thing I also notice is the Philips has a polarity stamped into it. The only thing that makes me nervous about this bulb is that it's front firing. I'm not quite sure how the light will get, be diffused. Hopefully it's not a hot spot right where they're at, but we'll find out. These are easy to install. You just take your socket, push them in. And then to install them in the cluster, you just line the notches up, and then you turn them right, tidy tidy. So after plugging your cluster back in, what you want to do is you want to turn your lights on and make sure that they work. One thing is though, you've got to have your your uh, dimmer plugged in. If it's not plugged in, they won't turn on and you'll think they're wrong polarity when in reality they are right polarity. So I've turned mine on and two of mine are reverse polarity. So I gotta pull the cluster back out, flip the polarity around, flip the bulb around, I mean. And contact. <whistles> Let there be light. Man, I'm so happy. I haven't had gauge cluster lights in two, three months now. Now you can stand back and look at your hard work. Man, they look great. 
just one suggestion that I have if you're doing this. Spend the money and buy good quality LEDs. Don't cheap out like I did. Don't make the same mistake I made. Um, the Philips ones, I think, are going to be great. I'll do a follow-up video letting you know how they are after a couple months. Thanks for watching, guys.